Hey, NVIDIA. Hey, what's up? Jay here. Hey, I was just on your website right now and I noticed that you guys... Jay? From Jay's, Jay's Two Cents, a YouTube channel with 680,000 sub subscribers? We, we met in Austin back in May during the launch event for the 1080. Dead Mouse was there. I'm, I'm the tall, uh, brown-haired guy, kind of handsome. No, that's, that's Luke. Anyway, so the, the reason why I'm calling is um, I saw that you guys launched a brand new Titan uh, or relaunched an old Titan, whichever, I'm, whatever you guys want to call it. And I was kind of curious if you were interested in sending one over for a review. Oh, I see. Okay, well, what if, okay, so how about this then? I counter the no with my soul for one Titan X, or at least what's left of it after YouTube. I mean, it's gotta have some monetary value. I see. Oh, we got kids. Do those have any monetary value? Oh, okay, great, great. Um, okay, so you should have my address and uh, go ahead and send that over and uh, we'll get right to it. Yeah, all right, yeah, you, you too, yeah. Jay, Jay's, Jay's two cents, no. Ryan is with PC Per, that, that's an entirely different site. Well, you know what, it doesn't even matter. Just uh, go ahead and send it over and uh, we'll get right on that. All right, thanks. Bye bye. You, you too now. Bye bye. That wasn't, that wasn't really all that hard. Wow, they're fast. With its unique freeform modular system, the new Master Case Maker 5 from Cooler Master allows unparalleled flexibility with its adjustable internal layout and exterior customization options. Learn more about how you can start customizing your own case by following the link down in the description. The GTX 1080 has been extremely popular, so popular, in fact, they're not in stock anywhere. They have been nothing but a logistics nightmare when it comes to keeping these things in stock. So if you've ordered one or you've got one, congratulations. You were top dog for all of about two months because now we've got the new Titan here, which is promising to be quite the behemoth when it comes to power. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of move through this video kind of quickly here because I want to do some live benchmarking with this video. And, and you guys like live benchmarking, I haven't done it in a while. And we're gonna do that today. But before we do that, we have to talk about some of the specs because you know, the, if you're a specs nerd like myself, you kind of you kind of get off on some of that stuff. But anyway, it's got 3,580 CUDA cores, approximately a thousand more than uh, what we'll call Little Pascal here on the GTX 1080. And uh, it's got a 1,417 megahertz boost clock, which is funny because that's about as far as one of my Titan X's the Maxwell version of Titan X is somewhere in this pile here. Kind of maxed out at about 1450. The three that are in Skunk Works get up to about 1500, but this one's base clock is barely below that. And it's got a 1531 megahertz boost clock. But as you guys know, we're, 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 gonna, we're gonna push this thing as far as we can. I don't know why some people were afraid to overclock this thing, but not me, not me, I'm gonna, I didn't, I didn't have to pay for it. I just had to give a couple of my kids to Nvidia and it was totally worth it. But for memory, it's got 12 gigabytes of G5X running at 10 gigabit, gigabit per second. That is a, that's some fast memory right there. I mean, it's 10,000 megahertz. And as you guys know, that's overclockable as well, but a 384 bit memory bus and a 480 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth. That's pretty huge considering this is not HBM. And I think that might be one of the first things that some of the people have been disappointed about is the fact that we were hoping the Titan on Pascal was gonna have HBM. But considering all the P100 cores uh, that you know that they talked about earlier in the year are probably eating up all that HBM productivity and manufacturing, it's not surprising that the Titan X does not feature HBM, especially since they're saying that this is technically not a gaming card. It was developed and made super fast for the purposes of deep learning and creating Skynet and having the end of the world as we know it, ground zero be right there at NVIDIA headquarters. Um, but again, I, I digress. The card itself is actually aimed more towards deep learning than it is gaming, even though it says GeForce GTX right on the side, whatever. Of course, it has the stuff that you would expect, like PCIe 3.0, HDMI 2.0B, and all that stuff, so you can hook this up to your home theater. Of course, you know this is a home theater card, uh, obviously, because, you know, you can do HD 4K playback through HDMI, which is kind of a big deal. In terms of output here, it's got the same stuff as the 1080. It's got an HDMI 2.0B, and it's got three DisplayPort 1.4, as well as a dual-link DVI. 
Um, but obviously, would you guys care most about? It doesn't have a backplate, and the answer is yes, it has a backplate. But for twelve hundred bucks, it better have a backplate. Hell, it better have a front plate too, for all that matters. Does it support SLI? Yes, up to two way, especially with an HB bridge. Definitely recommend it. Does it support simultaneous multi projection? Yes. Does it support Ansel? Yes. Does it support G Sync? No. It actually doesn't. No, just, just kidding. Yes, of course it supports G Sync. But it's got a TDP of 250 watts and a recommended 600 watt or higher power supply uh, to supply power to the 8 pin and 6 pin PCI Express power. So that's that. Here's what we're gonna do real quick. We're gonna jump into the benchmarks. I'm gonna show you those and then we're gonna hook it up on the test bench. We're gonna talk about a few things. There are some things to talk about here, believe it or not. And we're gonna get through this as best we can without it being as painful as possible. Transition. So if you bought the GTX 1080 simply because of the fact that it was the best of the best at the time that you got it, or at least tried to get it, rest in peace, myself included, because this guy has just been pushed out by this guy for being the fastest single GPU in the world. But it's not that cut and dry, guys, because if you look at things like performance per dollar, if you care about that, even if you're shopping for the best of the best, then you guys will know that there is a huge diminishing return on the Titan X versus the GTX 1080 when you compare the price of the fact that this thing right here is 1200 freaking US dollars or $3,962 in Australia or whatever it converts to be. Sorry guys, you, you guys really do get wrecked with pricing down there. It's terrible. Um, but yeah, the GTX 1080 is still a huge, huge performer when it comes to performance per dollar. I say that considering it's a $700 graphics card, but remember we are comparing it to 1200. Two of these is only 200 more than one of these, and two of these will literally smash on one of these. And in fact, we're gonna do a separate video about 1080 SLI versus a single Titan X. In fact, I'd like to do that video today, but I wanna keep this video manageable. We're gonna keep it with one card, at least compared to this one for now. And we will test other SLI configs versus this guy right here. But there are some things I want to talk about with this card. And to do that, we are going to have to go ahead and transition over to the test bench here so I can show you guys actually firsthand and not just talk about it on some of the things to expect with a GTX Titan X or just Titan X because apparently they're gonna maybe drop the GTX moniker in the future, who knows. Transition. So from left to right, this is the power percentage we're leaving that at stock at 100. This is the temperature. This is the GPU load percentage. This is the fan speed percentage, and that is the core clock. Now remember, this has a 1417 um, megahertz base clock with a 1531 boost clock. So we wanna keep an eye on that number and see what happens here. So anyway, gameplay is super smooth, even at 4K, but then again, it should be. As you can see, we've got a single card with MSAA 2X at 4K, achieving higher than 60 FPS. That's actually kind of a big deal. It's funny because I used to do these 4K tests and I always found it very difficult to play in 4K because it was kind of laggy, um, stuttery, but that's obviously not the case here. As long as we stay above that 60 FPS, then we're pretty good. I've done this mission so many times. This is the mission I actually use when I benchmark Grand Theft Auto V because it's pretty much on a track Everything is identical, it happens the same way every single time when it comes to the world and stuff. So it's 
in game play, you stupid son of a- So it, it's in the game, it's not a benchmark on a track. I'm controlling it, but it's very real world scenario in my opinion. But as you can see here right now, the temperatures have reached 83 to 84. That's where it's gonna start to control things to try and keep the temperatures down. The only way the GPU can actually keep the temperatures down is going to be by either increasing the fan speed, which by default, they've got it maxed out at 50%. It can't go any faster than that. Or reduce the voltages and or the clocks. Now the clocks and the voltages go hand in hand, so those work together. So what you're gonna notice here, the more that I play, you're gonna see these boost clocks start to come down a little bit. Now anything over 1531 right now is considered above the boost clock. So technically, although we've come down from 1700-ish down to the high 15s, low 16s, it's not considered a thermal throttle in the sense of the way thermal throttling is intended to work. Yeah, it is controlling the speed of the graphics by um, speeding up and slowing it down to control thermals. But thermal throttling usually relates to the GPU trying to save itself from certain death or the CPU in that matter, because it's the same concept there, by slowing itself down so that it doesn't cook. Now we're not doing that here because we're still above the boost clock. So that's just one of the things I wanted to mention here. The same goes for AMD. This is an NVIDIA specific thing where people want to say, oh, it's slowed down, therefore it's thermal throttling. No, it's, it's not thermal throttling, it's thermal adjusting. And thermal throttling would be if we start to go down below the advertised speeds because of, of thermals, if that makes sense. Oh shit, it's the cops! It's the cops, they know I stole this Titan X, they're after me. Simeon's not gonna be happy that I don't wreck this car up. Whoa, that's, that's bad. Oh geez. So the temperatures pretty much went right up to 83, 84. And as you guys saw on the benchmark chart, because I did all Founders Edition cards, you know, or, or reference cards for 980 Ti, Titan X, and the 1080 and the, tit the new Titan X, um, they all pretty much just went straight to their max um, temperature threshold, which is set right here. As you can see, it's set to 84. So what I'm doing right now is I have got Metro Last Light running on a 4K loop five times because I wanna see what's gonna to happen to this core clock and I wanna see if I can recreate what was happening during some of my benchmark testing was uh, how far, see we came all the way down to 1531 now, so all the way down to the boost clock, the, the factory boost clock, So we and now we're below it. We went down to 1481 for a moment. This is just the beginning of the first test. And as you can see, as our temperature is sitting here at uh, 83, and our load is at 100%, our fan speed isn't allowed to go any faster than 50 or 51%, I wanna see how far that this clock will actually come down. So we're gonna let the test go five times, we'll compare the average FPS, then we'll make some tweaks here, and then we'll see how well it actually does. So the first test here had a 64.71 average frame rate. Then the, uh, they call it run zero, that's so weird. Then the second test was 62.3, then 61.8, then 61.7, then 61.1. So you can see it was slowly starting to slow down. But if we take a look at the, um, the chart here, you can see right here, the core clock bounces around so much. I mean, so much. That's that's GPU boost in the way it's meant to work. But I, I find myself asking if this result could be better by simply playing around with the fan curve. And you know it can be. That's the whole point of this. You know it can be. So all I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna leave the temperature target and the power limit the same. But all I'm gonna do is put in here a custom fan curve and I'm just going to allow the fan to go faster at the higher temperature so what we're sacrificing here <clears throat> is a little bit of acoustic sound so the card will be a little bit noisier but I, I don't know about you I'm the kind of guy that would be more than happy to add a little bit of noise to my system if it means I get more performance than worrying about it being stupidly silent and I think that Nvidia is being way too conservative with the 50% fan cap Go faster on the fan speed, and let's see what actually happens to these core clocks. And as you can see, the way it started here, we're already higher. But anyway, we're just going to let it go, and then we'll come back and we'll compare. Well, if you can hear me over the fan, it's obviously kind of noisy. It's running 85% now. But I want to show you we're on the fifth test right here, and it's still starting 
in the 1700 megahertz range and it drops down into the mid to low 1600s and then comes back up. But look at that. Compared to the other tests which drop down into the high 14s, low 15s, we're seeing almost 200 megahertz average faster speed. All right, so the test is done and the only difference here is, as I showed you, I changed the fan curve, nothing else. So now we've got a 66.79, a 66.51, a 66.63, a 66.37, a 66.69. Do you see the difference there? We gained four FPS average increase uh, by doing nothing more at 4K, by the way. Four FPS at 4K gain is a lot. Um, and that was by doing nothing more than changing the damn fan curve. I wish NVIDIA would just make it a little bit more aggressive from the factory. Ugh. And then for those that are curious, here is the core clocks right here on the previous test before the new fan curve. This is where I did the little video right there, the segment saying, I'm gonna adjust the fan curve. And there's the new core clock right there. Look how much that jumped up by changing the fan curve. And then something else I want to also point out is if we look at the average temperatures, here's the average temperature with the poor fan curve that it ships with. Here's the new average temperature with the new fan curve. It came down approximately, what, max was 85. Um, that was probably just a spike, so really it was more at like 84, down to about 77 average. You can see it's 77 to 76 all the way across. It's pretty consistent. So yeah, this applies to any graphics card, by the way, not just the Titan X. Change your fan curves, do it. You're not gonna hurt anything. Oh yeah, and did I mention it overclocks really good too? It'll reach 2,050 megahertz, stable. I can go farther than that, I uh, haven't spent a lot of time trying to go farther than that, but then again, the heat also exponentially rose where even running this fan at 100% gave me 77C while overclocked at 100% fan speed. Yeah, that's kind of hot. But um, anyway, yeah, check out the results of this was what it looked like with the, the factory fan curve and the factory clocks. This is what it looks like with the overclock. Holy shit balls balls and Batman. If you've got an original Titan X like this one right here, or perhaps three of them in a system, you might be feeling like, I don't know the best way to explain it. I, I, I know how I feel, but the new Titan X, for the time being anyway, until they come out with the Titan XX, or my personal favorite, the Titan XXX, this thing is a freaking Godzilla. Uh, yeah, I find myself with this internal struggle because I'm installing two of these 1080s in Skunk Works, which I know is more than enough. I know it's more than enough, but this is $1,200. But like I said, I don't, I don't need two of these. I want two of these, so I want 200 of these, but I don't need it. Do I? I'm fine with two 1080s. I don't need two Titan Xs. Nope. Nope, no, nope, don't need to. Don't need to, don't need to. I don't need to. I don't, I just, I don't, I don't need to. I don't need you. You're, you don't control me. I make the decisions around here. This is my channel. This is. <sighs> hey, hey, NVIDIA. Hey, Jay here. So I just did that review and I decided that Jay, Jay with Jay's two cents. How many Jay's?